Mm. Coffee enemas. Oh. Do you know what that is? I've heard of it. <laughs> you heard of it. All right. Because it's like in the zeitgeist. Like people are hearing about Why it. coffee? Coffee enemas. Why are you sticking coffee up your butt? Yeah, I know. It, it's, it's only necessary because we live in like a pretty toxic world at this point. But what happens is the caffeine... Okay, so you're sticking this little tube like 12 inches up hey. your butt, actually. I know. And it seems totally crazy and weird, but you do it all yourself. You don't go somewhere to do it. It's not like that. And you're hitting this, like, it's called a flexure. You're hitting this point right here where your intestines come across and then down, okay? And right there is a nerve bundle that reflexes to your, it's called a parasympathetic nerve bundle. It reflexes to your liver, and it basically helps your liver to dump toxicants. Like it's it's a it's like a supercharging of your liver's ability to detox you. Right? By putting coffee in there? Because the caffeine stimulates that nerve bundle. It's basically like jacking up your liver. Because we don't know how to detox better than our own body does. Your liver is charged with that responsibility. So if you can help your liver do it, it's going to be best and and this is most relevant in cancer like radical cancer treatments because when you, the tumors are breaking down you need to flush that waste or you'll die like literally it's called tumor lysis syndrome so you know some early pioneers discover that coffee enemas are critical like literally life or death critical for helping you flush those wastes. So I learned about them from the master and since using them in my practice completely changed my practice. So like a med taper that would take two to three years now takes me like six months with a given patient. And and Allie, so so Allie started doing um, coffee enemas twice a day. So but the dietary template is is a little bit I wouldn't say it's like totally um People think healthy, right? And they think like vegan or they think vegetarian or they think, you know, tons of green juice or whatever. And I noticed early on that as long as my patients ate a fair amount of red meat, they got better. And I used to be like an ethical vegetarian when I was eating like cheese doodles and Pepsi, basically. And so it was very confusing to me that, you know, red meat could be a healthy part of anyone's lifestyle or, you know, anything I could ever wrap my mind around recommending. But over the past 10 years, and now with the understanding of Nick's metric, you know, where there are some people who do require red meat to balance their nervous system, essentially. Now, is this an actual requirement? 